it's the fourth Lord's Day after the resurrection. I am Bishop T. Kofi Niles, bringing the word to you today. And we'll also be sharing in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Welcome. Trust that we have gathered together in the name of the Lord with our friends and family to give God the praise, the honor, and the glory that he certainly deserves. Today, as we worship, we continue to give thanks to God for the opportunity to be able to meet together even as families across cyberspace. For we know that where two or three are gathered in his name, there he will be in the midst to bless. So, steady your hearts. Forget about everything else around you now. And let us focus on our King of Kings, on our God of Lords, the one who stepped into darkness, bringing his marvelous light. Our song of preparation, light of the world, here I am to worship. sustainer of all things, seen and unseen. Our God is faithful and gracious. The Lord Jesus Christ is our Savior and brother. Jesus died for our sins 
and rose for our justification. The Holy Spirit is our enabler and comforter. We depend on God's Spirit to worship and to serve God according to God's will. For we are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. The hymn, Gather Christian, let's now celebrate numbered 375 voices in praise. Despite the many times that we fail you, O oh God, you never fail us. And for that, we are grateful. So we adore you this day. We bless your name, O oh God, for the protection you offer. For the fact that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You are our banner, our shield, our buckler. You are our defender. You are the friend that sticketh closer than a brother. When all has failed, my God, you remain constant. That's who you are. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Rose of Shalom, the Lily of the Valley, the Bright and Morning Star, the one who is omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, the one who dwells within us, the one who is high and lifted up, the mighty God to whom nothing and with whom no one can compare. We adore you, Lord God. We see you as the one who stands along us, among us in your risen power. We see you as the one whom we can turn to in every situation of life because you are gracious 
and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. That's why you invite us to come just as we are, saying, though our sins be as scarlet, you will make them as white as snow. Though they be like crimson, you will make them as wool. So Lord, we stand on your promises as we come now making confessions to you. You said in your word, if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us. So for each of us, we invite you now to make your personal confessions to God and pray for his forgiveness. Search us, O oh God, and know our hearts today. Try us, dear Savior. Know our thoughts, we pray. See if there be any wicked ways within us. Cleanse us from every sin and set us free. Brothers and sisters, hear then the words of grace. Your sins, our sins are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. And so, Lord, we give you thanks today that you have forgiven our sins and given us another opportunity to worship you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We thank you that in the midst of all the challenges of life, you are always there for us because you never leave us and you never forsake us. So today, Lord God, as we continue to give you thanks, we thank you that you continue to be our, the one who preserves, the one who sustains, the one who enables us to live from day to day. For you cause the sun to rise and to set. You give us the breath of life each day. You provide for us all that is needed. And so we are grateful. We say thank you, Lord. But above all, for your Son, Jesus Christ, who has made salvation possible, we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, continue. We ask of you to have your way among us as we worship you this morning. May our praise be a sweet incense ascending to your throne. And may our hearts across the length and breadth of this land and beyond be united in worship of you. Hear the prayers we offer now as we do so in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people say, Amen and Amen. At this time we go into a period of praise and worship, a short period, but we trust that you will be able to free your hands up, stand with us, sing with us as we praise God together.
presence of the Lord. As we give him all the praise and thanks as due to his name this morning, as we continue to sing praises unto his name. This morning comes to us from Psalm 23 and I invite you to join with me as we share in this Psalm, Psalm 23. We'll read of course responsibly. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
makes me to lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows together. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole, my whole life long. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be, world well, without end. Amen. 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 Share with us this morning is Brother Lensworth Blair, and he will come and read for us the Gospel. The Gospel according to St. John chapter 10, reading from verse 1 through to verse 10. The Gospel reading is taken from John chapter 10, reading from verse 1 to 10. Glory to you, O God. God. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. Brothers and sisters, today as we share in God's word, we think on the theme, we are the sheep of God's pasture. Growing up as a youngster, I had a lot to do with sheep and goats. And the time that it took to care for them, the responsibility given by my parents, the sheep don't come home at night, then you can't come home at night. So if the sheep out, you out. That's your responsibility. The good shepherd Jesus describes himself as. But today as we share, thinking about the fact that we are the sheep of God's pasture, we will see the way in which God enfold his people, the people of Israel, as his own. God the Father, the chief shepherd, Israel, the flock, and the way in which Jesus defined himself among the I am sayings. I am the good shepherd. And so as we think on these things, journeying this morning, in this season of the resurrection, in all that we are faced with, we are to be assured that we are the sheep in God's pasture. Let us pray. Master, speak. Your servants here, waiting for your gracious word. Speak to us now, O God, and let your word be heard. Ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. And amen. Friends, the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep is a very special one. Jesus says, 
the sheep knows the voice of the shepherd and follows. This relationship is one of dependence where the sheep relies heavily on the shepherd. In the Old Testament, we hear of God as the chief shepherd leading his people out of bondage and captivity. We see the shepherd providing, protecting, guiding, leading the way all through the, the story of Moses and the Israelites. We see God firsthand, the many miracles he performed. We see the good shepherd parting the Red Sea for the sheep to go through. We see the good shepherd causing water to flow from the rock. We see the good shepherd providing a pillar of fire by night to give light and a cloud by day to give shade. We see the good shepherd destroying those who are pursuing the sheep. We see that relationship of dependence. The shepherd providing manna for the sheep. Israel, God's own people, and God as that chief shepherd making it clear to them as they trusted and depended upon him. Yes, there were times when the sheep went astray. Yes, there were times when the sheep were complaining. But through it all, they learned that valuable lesson to trust the shepherd, to depend on the shepherd. God Almighty used Moses as he guided them along the path. But when we come to the New Testament, God's desire was that the sheep would find its way back into pasture. You recall from the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, when God made Adam and Eve and he placed them in the garden, the pasture. There were certain instructions given. Those instructions were disobeyed and we know the consequences. Then they were driven out. But God never stopped seeking a way to reconcile them, to bring them back into that pasture. And so today as we think about the fact that we are the sheep of God's pasture, we may have wandered, we may have drifted, but we have a place that we can call our own. We have a place because God, our Heavenly Father, has prepared a place. Jesus told the disciples in John chapter 14, I go to prepare a place. This place is available, but in order for us to find our way, we have to go through the door. In the passage from John chapter 10, Jesus highlights this fact. He says, I am the door. Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. I am the gate for the sheep. All who comes before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep do not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved. And so the pasture is there for the sheep. The place is there for you and I, but we must enter the gate. We must enter the right way. And Jesus puts it, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. My brothers and sisters, you need to understand this. There were many shepherds about Israel. There were many who sought to lead God's people. But there were some shepherds who were not doing what they ought to be doing. There were some shepherds who were abusing the sheep. There were some shepherds who were just eating out the sheep. You know some people raise chicken so for Christmas. When Christmas comes they go into the pen and some people raise animals for food. And so they have one purpose. To ensure that they are fattened and so on so that they can be eaten. But this shepherd, this shepherd was no ordinary shepherd. When we look at Ezekiel.
Ezekiel chapter 34, I think it is, God chastised the leaders of Israel for, mis for abusing and misusing his people. Those were the shepherds who did not act according to the way they ought to. And so God brought judgment upon them. God was against them. But in this case, Jesus says, I am not just a shepherd, but the good shepherd. And there is a difference. I am the good shepherd who take care of the sheep. He uses an analogy of the, the hired hand. The hired hand, when danger comes, may often run and leave the sheep. After all, it's not my own. My life comes first. But if it is your sheep, you will go the extra mile. If it is your possession, you will seek at all costs to protect what is your own. And that is what our Lord Jesus Christ did. He stood in the gap for you and I. He went and he paid the ultimate price. Death on the cross. Why? Because he loves us. Because he wants to see the sheep back into the pasture. He wants to see the sheep back into his fold. So he's not just any shepherd. He is the good shepherd who laid down his life for his friends. The gatekeeper, yes, have a role. The gatekeeper will know the shepherd. And so the gatekeeper will allow the shepherd to come in. And the shepherd will then use his staff and lead the sheep out into pasture. This relationship in which the sheep would respond to the shepherd. Jesus himself said it in the passage. The sheep knows my voice. They hear and they follow. They will not follow the stranger. But they will run from him. Because they do not know the voice of the stranger. Brothers and sisters, as we think about the good shepherd, if you examine the things that Jesus did, the picture will be clear for us to see what role the good shepherd plays. The good shepherd nurtures the sheep. Jesus taught the disciples. He taught the crowds that gathered to listen. The Sermon on the Mount. Every opportunity he got, the shepherd nurtured the sheep. The shepherd healed the sheep. Whenever the sheep was harmed, the shepherd would go and make sure that the sheep is bonded, that the wound is clean and protected, taken care of. The good shepherd Jesus offered healing to everyone who came seeking healing. The good shepherd restored life. Lazarus, Jairus' daughter, the woman whose son was dead and he came and she came. The good shepherd took care. Just as when the, 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 the bear would attack the sheep, the lion would attack the sheep, the shepherd would go after them in order to protect the sheep. And we see right through scripture, Jesus was doing this and so much more as the good shepherd. You see, he had to make this qualification because just before in chapter 9 of the Gospel of John, there were some shepherds, leaders, the scribes and the Pharisees who were annoyed and in disbelief over one man who was born blind and he received his sight from Jesus. They pulled him before the council. They had him testify and in disbelief they sent for his parents to ask, are you sure this is your son? Are you sure he was born blind? Tell us how he received his sight. The man himself had to tell them, I don't know what you believe, but this I know. Once I was blind, but now I see. These were shepherds, but were they good shepherds? And so Jesus makes the distinction the good shepherd and the bad shepherd. Brothers and sisters, as we think about this relationship, the relationship between the sheep and the shepherd, that's how the sheep will only follow the shepherd's voice. 
God shepherded Israel. God spoke to Moses. And Moses was instructed to guide the people. You see, that dependency. When Moses was away from the camp, there was trouble in the camp. Because Israel depended, the people of Israel depended on Moses' leadership. As God instructed him, they followed as Moses led. In the same way, my brothers and sisters, today, we as the people of God, we as the sheep of God's pasture, ought to listen to the good shepherd. Yes, we may be going through some trying times at this moment, but the good shepherd always takes care of the sheep. The good shepherd leads the sheep into green pasture. The psalmist says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He describes all that the good shepherd does. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. He restores my soul. He likes the role of the good shepherd. Jesus came to us as that shepherd, my brothers and sisters. He qualifies so that we may not be led astray. Sadly, our reality is that many are following the false shepherds. These things will happen. We are told in scriptures. People will have itching ears. But how do we know? How do we follow? The relationship makes the difference. Because if you have a relationship with a good shepherd, you will know the shepherd's voice. You'll be able to distinguish one from another. If you have that right relationship with Almighty God, you will know what he requires of you. You will know what he expects of you. And then you'll be able to follow. So how is your relationship with the good shepherd? How is your relationship with Almighty God. Christ made it clear in that context. The way we ought to go. The fact that we ought to follow. And listen. That we may hear the voice of the Good Shepherd. Not just to follow any voice. But the voice of the Good Shepherd. He made that contrast between the two. The way of the true shepherd and the way of the false shepherd. Jesus indeed is the good shepherd. If that was not clear enough, he says, I am the gate. The gate. He has the exclusive right to allow entry or not. The gate is an important place for one to transition between one boundary and another. I am the way, the truth, and the life. If we are to share in this pasture as God's people, then we must find our way through the gate. Jesus Christ, the gate. We must find the one who is the way. Jesus Christ is the way. So as we think about it, we are God's sheep. We are God's sheep. We belong to his pasture. Wherever we might have drifted, wherever we might have wandered, the good shepherd beckons to us, come. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Brothers and sisters, the Good Shepherd offers to us an invitation to come. To come. Come and enjoy good pasture. Come and enjoy a green pasture. Come and be watered besides the still water. Come and have your soul restored. The invitation is there for us. This Good Shepherd does not put any price on the sheep's head. This good shepherd does not merely raise the sheep in order to devour the sheep. 
this good shepherd wants the sheep to be restored with the right relationship to the chief shepherd. And so, my brothers and sisters, wherever you may have wandered, whatever pasture you may be in at this time, whatever situation you find yourself in, it is not beyond the good shepherd's reach. He leaves the 99 and he goes after the one. He does not embrace the notion, I have 99 and that's enough. He goes after the one because each one is important. The fact, that, the fact is that heaven rejoices over the one sinner who repents rather than over the 99 saints rejoicing, praising God. The one is important. You are important. Whatever pastor you find yourself in, whatever situation you find yourself in, you may say sin has got a hold on you. You may say I'm too far gone. You may say you don't know half the things I did. I don't, but God does. And he offers us that forgiveness. I don't, but the good shepherd does. And he says, come as you are. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. This good shepherd wants to restore God's sheep to God's pasture. Why not respond? Why not come to the good shepherd? Why not come and allow him to bind your wounds? Why not come and allow him to take the hands of the bear from off of you? Why not allow him to bring that transformation in your life that you so desire? The Good Shepherd longs to do this. The Good Shepherd invites us and he calls us to come. But we must, my brothers and sisters, hear his voice. We must listen to his voice so that we can respond in the appropriate way. Yes, Jesus is the Good Shepherd and invites us to come. There is somebody else falling. There is a mischief maker at work. One who comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And some are lightening this pandemic that we are in to this one because he's destroying economies. He's destroying families. He's taking lives. He's killing so many. He or she. Some people said a lady named Corona. Whatever gender you want to put it on. Some say that this role of this pandemic fits here, steal, kill, and destroy. We see all that is happening around us. We hear the cries. We see the pain, the frustration. That's the role of the enemy. And Jesus says he comes to do these things. But my brothers and sisters, there is someone else. Someone greater. Someone who is omnipotent, who possesses all power. Someone who is omniscient beyond anywhere we can go. He is there. Someone who is ever present with us. Someone who knows all things. He says, but I come. That you might have life. And have it more abundantly. So in the midst of this situation. In the midst of the pasture that seems to be dying, doom, gloom. In the midst of this situation, the Good Shepherd comes and he extends to us that invitation. The Good Shepherd invites us to hear his voice. The Good Shepherd invites us to follow him. The Good Shepherd invites us to green pastures where we may feast, where we may be well taken care of. Remember in John chapter 3 and verse 17, Christ declared, I get it clear for you. This is what he says indeed. God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Good Shepherd came to save the world. And it may seem as if all is lost now. But we are invited 
We are invited to respond to the invitation of the Good Shepherd to come. To come to Jesus. To come. To come and be restored so that you may be once again God's sheep in God's pasture. Being watered, being fed, being taken care of, and ultimately receiving that eternal life which he offers. He said to the disciples, I go to prepare and I will come again so that where I am, there you may be also. So brothers and sisters, yes, we are the sheep of God's pasture. The pasture is there, but we have to find our way to that pasture. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the gate. He is the good shepherd who continues to call us from wherever we are to find our place in him. He continues to invite us to build that relationship that you may come to know his voice. He makes it clear that yes, there are other shepherds out there, but he is the good shepherd who laid down his life for his sheep. He's not merely a gatekeeper. He's not merely somebody who is a hired hand, but rather he is the good shepherd himself. Will you hear his voice this day? Will you hear his call? Will you heed? Will you respond so that you may find good pasture, good pasture in the Lord Jesus Christ? Remember, we are the sheep of God's pasture, and Jesus is that door that leads us to that pasture. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Good Shepherd, we are sheep come to you today, seeking, O oh God, to be restored to that pasture. Pasture which will provide us with all that is needed, that you may live this life according to your will. Lord God, there are times when we drift. There are times when we wander away. There are times when we are fooled by other voices. But today we ask of you that you will help us to again hear your voice. That you may help us to again find our way. And indeed, be a part of that pasture. To be restored of God as your sheep. The children of Israel at times drifted and wandered. Lord, you did not give up on them. And we know you will not give up on us today. So Lord God, for those who are in your pasture, we pray that you will continue to nourish, nurture, and strengthen us. And for those who are still seeking, oh God, the way, may we enable them through the lives that we live those who call you in your name. May we be the witnesses, O oh God. May we point them to the gate. May we point them to the Good Shepherd so that they too in turn may learn your voice, will hear your voice, and will follow as you lead. So take charge. Take charge of our lives. Oh God, bring us from whatever pastures we may find ourselves that are against you. Bring us from whatever pastures that are destroying us. That we may find restoration. That we may find fresh water. That we may find our green pasture in you. Hear the prayers we offer. We offer. And may your word, oh God, take root and produce fruit. This we ask. In Jesus' name. Amen. We sing the hymn, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need thy tender care. Numbered 338 in the voices in praise.
continue to raise up men and women to lead this fight, for those offering care for those affected, for those searching for cure, vaccination, or we out. Lord, we lift them to you this day. We ask that you will increase their wisdom and give them, O oh God, the strength they need to press on, making a difference. For we know, Lord God, that in all situations, you are ever present. So be present with those on the front line at this time. And enable them, O oh God, to know with a sense of certainty that the Good Shepherd will take care of his sheep. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we bring before you our country, Guyana. We pray for our leaders, religious, political, city. Lord God, we ask that as you place them in positions of authority and influence, that they may look to you for guidance. We know your word declares, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And without a vision, the people perish. Grant a vision to our leaders, O oh God, in the midst of our own electoral challenges. We know that you are the way maker. And Father God, we continue to look to you for a solution. We thank you for the agencies involved in this process of the election. We thank you, O oh God, for the Ministry of Health involved 
in the fight against COVID-19 here locally. We thank you, O oh God, for our officers who are on the front line enforcing whatever law is laid down for the safety of this nation. Lord, we ask your protection on them. We ask that you will grant them wisdom and compassion that even as they serve, even as they lead, even as they make policies, even as they seek, O oh God, a resolution to our issues, they may lean on you, the author and perfecter of our faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Loving God, we pray for those who are sick. We thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We thank you that you are our healer, the one who places that banner over us. And so, Lord, we ask that as they call on your name, that banner will be placed over them also. By your stripes we declare, we are here. And so we pray even now for your divine touch upon those who need a touch from you. Especially those, oh God, who have been affected by this disease. Lord, may they hear you. May they feel your touch. And may they, oh God, be restored in that garden where they may feed on green pasture, where they may be watered by the still brook, where they may find, O oh God, that restoration to good health in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, we bring before you our children and young people in a special way. Especially those, O oh God, who have challenges with the new approach to learning online. Those who may not have the necessary resources like the internet or computer. But God, we pray for generous hearts. We pray for people with a willingness to share, to lend a hand, so that they may not be left behind, but rather, O oh God, they may be able to learn even as the lessons are taught in this new and innovative way. We pray for our teachers, that you will give them the wisdom, O oh God, to use what is available, so that together we may continue to be a nation that is educated. Not just, O oh God, with academics, but more so, a nation that knows you, loves you, and is seeking to serve you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we think of those who have lost love, and we pray for your comfort. Those in and out of our society, those whom we know, and those, O oh God, whom we do not know. But we, Father, we are aware that indeed all things come from you. We are assured that you are there for us in every situation. So we pray that you will meet our listeners at their point of need. Comfort those who need to be comforted. Provide for those who need to be provided for. So that in the end, they may recognize the good shepherd at work and give you the praise and the glory you deserve. So Lord, hear the prayers we offer now. As we do so in the name of him who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For a time is a kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. By way of notices, we want to remind you to join us next week for another broadcast. It will be Mother's Day, and we honor our mothers in a very special way. And so we invite you to be a part of us. We want to express thanks to those who would have contributed to our relief effort, to our hampers that were distributed. We want to say thanks to those who 
made the extra effort to have their offerings and their tithes dropped off, delivered to those who would have um, transferred the funds via the way of bank or uh, money transfer. We are grateful to you for your contribution as you seek to keep the work of God going, our relief effort, and also programs like these. And so we are grateful and we would like you to know that by saying thanks for your contribution to the work of God. Let us go to God in prayer as we bless those gifts that were received and those that will continue to come. God, our provider, we thank you for the ways in which you have provided for those persons who have offered in return to you their tithes, their offerings, who would have brought, O oh God, items to be donated to others in need. Those, O oh God, who would have made their sacrificial offering available to you over the season of Easter. We thank you. And we ask, O oh God, that as they would have made that sacrifice, you will bless them in return. You said when we give, it will come back, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Lord, may this be their testimony, because they gave. For those who are not able to, Lord, we pray that you will provide for them. Those who are in need, we pray that you will meet them at their point of need. Lord, as we receive word, give us the ability to reach out and to make a difference in the lives of those who are in need. So we thank you for your providence. We thank you for these gifts. Bless them, O oh God, and may they be used for the furtherance of your work here in this part of your vineyard. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. As we prepare for our sacrament, we sing together. Let us break bread together on our knees. It's numbered 434 in our hymn. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. The Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and sup with them, and they with me. Please be seated as we share in the prayer of humble access. Lord, we come to your table, trusting in your mercy and not in any goodness of our own. We are not worthy to gather the crumbs under your table. But it is your nature always to have mercy, and on that we depend. So feed us with the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, that we may forever live in him, and he in us. Amen. Lord, we ask your blessing on the elements as prepared in homes. Sanctify them now, and may they remind us of your body which was broken, and your blood which was shed. In Jesus' name. Amen. We invite the head of the home to begin to distribute the elements, the bread, followed by the wine, and then we will all partake together. broken for us, we take and eat, and we are thankful. The blood of Christ was shed, that our sins might be washed away, we take and drink, and we are thankful. taste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all mankind. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning, The Lord's My Shepherd I Not Want, number 33 in the VIP.
and were brought again from the dead of the Lord Jesus Christ. The great shepherd of the sheep and the blood of the eternal covenant make you perfect in every good thing to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, and to him be the glory this day and forevermore. Amen. God bless you all and see you at Bible study Wednesdays, 5.30. Bye-bye.